<laughs> that never gets old. I mean, my heart is up here beating. I want to march and stamp and do my thing too. But uh, that's all. It's their day. Wow, that's 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 awesome. Great job, Charles. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Are we excited to be here today? That's what I'm talking about. Usually I got to ask everybody to pump it up one more time, but you did it good on the first go around, but I'm going to do it again anyway. Are we ready to be here today? That's what I'm talking about. All right. All right. My name is Dion Bentley. I'm the captain and PIO here with DeKalb County Fire Rescue. And on behalf of our fire chief, Darnell Fulham, I would like to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for class 113. Yeah, all right. Today, we will be celebrating the accomplishments of these 46 firefighter recruits. Over the past 40 weeks, they have all sacrificed their time with their families in order to pass rigorous daily tests, as well as exams such as the MPQ exam one and two and national registry. They also push their bodies to the physical limits by completing multiple training evolutions down at our fire canopy tower. And all because of their hard work and sacrifice, this is why we want this graduation to truly be a celebration. Unlike most graduations that are real formal, uh, Chief Fulham wants this to be a very family-orientated event. So what I'm talking about, when you get a chance to cheer and yell and scream, and when you come up and do pin those badges, you can let it out. We're going to have some fun, all right? <laughs> But before we get this party started, we got first have to go ahead and stand so we can honor our nation's flag. The colors will be presented by DeKalb County Fire Rescue's Color Guard. At this time, will you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. And now, I'd like to, we'd like to give our invocation. DeKalb County Fire Rescue Chaplain Michael Lemon will be given our invocation. Thank you, Captain. I invite you all to go before the throne of grace today and soon a position and posture for prayer, every head bowed, every eye closed. Supremely great, all-wise, all-merciful one, thou who orders our breath and our very steps, thou, God, we come today with reverence, asking you to touch and bless this occasion with your powerful hand. Lord, with resolute faith and trust in you, 
We claim your providential word, which declares that all things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose. Lord, we come here today asking you to bless those who are taking the oath today. Give them the strength to serve the present age. Bless them, O oh Lord with a will to power and abilities that will remain sharp. Bless us all, O oh Lord, with the energy and the protection to weather any storm, survive any challenge, and endure any hardship. We declare that all praises be unto you, O oh God. Lord, continue to uplift this department and the great county that we serve its citizens, its stakeholders, and its leadership. Lead us and guide us each and every day, each and every way as we travel life's highway. In your merciful name, we all do say, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Lemon. All righty. At this time, I'd like to introduce a special guest. We have... Mr. CEO Michael Thurman here in attendance. Let me tell you a little bit about Mr. CEO. CEO Thurman is in his fourth year as the chief executive officer of the fourth largest county in Georgia and one of the most diverse counties in the Southeast. As the cab CEO, he is working to restore the public's trust in government while prudently preparing for the county's financial future. CEO Thurman is focused on making our neighborhoods safer by enhancing the public safety system. CEO Thurman proposed in 2020 a budget which included a 4% pay raise for more than 2,300 public safety employees. And I might add, we did see it on our checks last week. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. CEO. And if we have any commissioners in the house, thank you as well. CO Thurman is also improving child well-being by expanding access to resources that offer support to children and families. He has worked tirelessly to beautify the county by eradicating blight, and all these great things are accomplished were accomplished all while maintaining a healthy rainy day fund of $110 million. Can you please join me in welcoming DeKalb County CEO, Michael Thurman. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of DeKalb County's 750,000 residents, on behalf of our governing authority, I am honored and thrilled to offer my congratulations to what I am told by our chief is the most talented, <laughs> most accomplished, One of the largest, and I'm still, this one, the verdict out on them, but he tell me they the best looking graduating class we've ever had. <laughs> so 113th, congratulations. But also, if you see a turtle, sitting on a fence post or seated in a graduation class, you know that turtle didn't put itself on top of the fence post. So I want to thank the family, the husbands, the wives, the mothers, the fathers, the aunts and uncles who made this day possible, for this is truly a day that the Lord has made. I want to thank Chief Darnell Fulham, let me tell you, I'm, I, I observe leaders and leadership in men and women, 
And throughout my long career, I've had the opportunity to associate with many men and women of vision and integrity. But I can say without any reservation that Chief Darnell Fulham is a man of high integrity, a visionary leader, a person who never falters to serve the public first, and a man who has led the Camp Fire Rescue to a level of unprecedented prominence and success. So let's give our chief a round of applause. Thank you so much, chief. <laughs> to the command staff, thank you as well. And I'll leave you with this, to the husbands and wives and mothers and aunts and uncles, to the sons and daughters. The most sobering of all responsibilities of the CEO of DeKalb County, and I have many, and that is to send men and women into harm's way to keep the citizens safe. These young men and women will join a force of men and women who think it not odd to rush towards danger when the rest of us run away. The commitment I make to you and them and to those not within the presence of my voice is that my goal and my commitment is that here in DeKalb County, Georgia, we will have the best equipped, the best trained, and the best paid fire rescue department in Georgia and America. That's my commitment. Thank you. Again, thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Your support is so much appreciated by both public safety departments, fire and police. Hey, we got somebody. You want to come on up here? <laughs> That's okay. It's a family thing. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of introductions, and everybody in this room is going to get some type of praise. So that's how we're going to work this thing out. Um, first, I'd like to start off by introducing our uh, executive staff for the fire department. I'd like to have Fire Chief Darnell Fulham please stand. <laughs> Deputy Chief of Operations Shane Dobson. Deputy Chief of Support Services, Jason Smith. <laughs> Deputy Chief of Professional Services, Antonio Burton. <laughs> and Assistant Chief, William Voorhees. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce our training staff. First, we have our Chief of Training, Battalion Chief William Roberts. <laughs> Just want to say a few things about this training staff, everyone. Chief Robert and his staff, they work tirelessly uh, to, to provide the best training for these recruits. Their commitment to excellence is evident in every and all aspects of their training. Let me give just one great example of their commitment. Um, you probably know a lot of these young ones, have, no, they're not young, but you know, <laughs> they're young to us. <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of these recruits had to go ahead and take what's called the National Registry uh, for EMT, and it's a very very tough exam to pass on your first go around. The national average is 64% passing ratio on your first try. DeKalb County and these great recruits and these great instructors managed a 92% passing ratio. So while we're clapping about them, let's introduce them. Captain Todd McCullough. Captain Frederick Poole. <laughs> Captain Scott Stroop. Those are our training captains. And let me just introduce you to our fire rescue instructors. Instructor David Goddard. Instructor Charles Gray. Instructor Rodney Heindel. Instructor Charlene Jadon. <laughs> Instructor Nathan Leota. <laughs> Instructor William Lillard. <laughs> Instructor Carlos Lindsay. <laughs> Instructor Robin Martin. <laughs> Instructor Michael Morris. <laughs> Instructor Fidel Miranda. 
Instructor Hans Trotty. I would also like to recognize two awesome administrative assistants, uh, both Jerry Hopkins and Priscilla White. Can you please stand? Their work and commitment behind the scenes is invaluable to the department and the su success of the firefighter recruit class. All right, also, uh, I'd like to introduce our recruiting department. Without those members, uh, keeping the recruits informed during the whole hiring process would have been very difficult. Uh, Captain Troy Augustine, could you please stand or wave your hand? <laughs> Master firefighter, Adrian Ziad. Remember, I told you you're going to recognize everybody. Um, at this time, can all current and retired military personnel please stand? We salute you and thank you for your service. All current and retired police and firefighters, can you please stand? Thank you very much for your service. Do we have any elected officials in the house today? All righty. We'd also like to thank DCTV23 back there with the cameras. So everybody will be able to check this out at a later date. Also thank the Porter Sanford for being a gracious host as always. And lastly, we'd like to recognize all of the family and friends in, in attendance that allowed for these fantastic recruits to go through some real tough times, a lot of homework, a lot of studying, probably some attitude changes and things of that nature. We appreciate your support. Give yourselves a big hand. <laughs> well, right now we're about to get to the good stuff here. We're gonna have the presentation of awards. Um, I would love to have instructor Charles Gray come on up and acknowledge these awesome ones. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing? Can you just for me give the finest fire department in the Southeast to cab fire and rescue a hand, please? Woo! Yes, yes, yes. And the nation. Thank you, Chief, for clearing that up for me. Thank you. Also, recruits, I want you to give your family a hand. Yes. You guys deserve it. Thank you so much for allowing us to take care of these young people for the past year or so. I have the honor to represent our training department and present some special recognition and awards. So in order to be, excuse me, in order for a candidate to complete training, they have to go through two obstacles or two hurdles. One is the EMS department and EMS the training. EMS training, and then fire training. Uh, you know what, y'all? I'm going to quit playing. I'm getting too old. I need my glasses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's start over. <laughs> now we can see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to be cute. It ain't working. Okay. <laughs> In order for a candidate to complete this training process, they have to complete the EMS side and the fire side, but we are one department. Isn't that right? We're one department. We work together. So um, for these candidates, they go through a lot of different things because you have to understand that the Cab County standards are very high. We want the best because we realize that when these young people get out there, the people that are calling on them need the best. So I have some special awards that I want to give out. First, I'm going to start with the EMS side, though. Start with the academic award on the EMS side. Now, what I like to do, I'm going to call three names. I want the three of you to stand up. One, Mr. David Stennett, stand up for us. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Anderson. 
and Mr. Asher Williams. These are the top three in the EMS class. Had the top three grades. Absolutely. That is awesome. Awesome. But the top overall grade for EMS was Mr. Andrew Anderson. Give it up. Come on over here, sir. I have something for you. Come on. Now, this next award is called the Perseverance Award. And this award is in recognition of showing continued effort despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. And I can attest to this because this uh, particular recruit had some difficulty at a, at, at a particular time in training, but kept working on it, consistently worked on it, gave their best effort. And as you can see, they are sitting here on the stage today so it's clear that they did what they needed to do in order, in, in order to overcome. And this particular recruit is Jennifer Wise. All right, so moving on. As I said to you before, we kind of have two sides of one house. One side is EMS, one side is fire. So on the fire side, as far as the academic um, award is concerned, we had three people who were in the running. Let me see, let me make sure I got these names right here. Yeah. Let me get Mr. Christopher Rodmanovich. Mr. Robert Williams, and Mr. Liam Fodor. These are the top three in fire. Now, the one who had the overall top score of 96.7%, wow, incredible, is Mr. Christopher Rodmanovich. Awesome job. Awesome job. Okay, so before our recruits are able to leave the fire academy, they have to complete what is called a PCT test, which is physical capabilities test. And all of these recruits sitting over here completed this test, every last one of them. Absolutely. Now, what I want to do is kind of give you an idea of what this test entails. First of all, they're in full turnout gear. That's everything. Breathing air, face piece, bottle, everything. All right? They have to do a rescue drill. They have to walk backwards with a 185-pound mannequin 100 feet. They have to do a, a charged hose drag. They have to drag an inch and three-quarter hose filled with water 50 feet, which weighs well over 200 pounds. They have to drive an I-beam on a Kaiser sled 35 inches. And this I-beam probably weighs, what is it, 100 pounds or so? Um, they have to do the hydrant assembly. They have to attach a five-inch hose and a gate valve and turn it 20 times. They have to set up a roof ladder. They have to raise and lower an extension ladder. Then they have to climb up a tower uh, to the fifth floor with a 50-foot section of two-and-a-half-inch hose on their shoulder. When they get to the fifth floor, they have to go out to the balcony, and they pull up a 35-pound section of hose that's attached to a rope. After they pull that up, then they make their way all the way to the top of the tower at the seventh floor, ring the bell, and they make their way back down. Uh, they grab the section of five inch hose, uh, two and a half inch hose, make their way all the way out. Then they go to the ceiling simulator. They push and pull five times, three rounds. Now understand, all that has to be done in 13 minutes. That's a lot of stuff. And, and, and what I can't adequately get you to see is the amount of land that they have to cover in order to do this. Now, that's amazing in and of itself. 
But we have a few gentlemen here who did this in a seven-minute time frame. Incredible. Incredible. So I'm going to call your names. And we came up with this idea because we had a few classes where they would uh, do it in this time frame, and we just realized how amazing that is. So we came up with this thing called a seven-minute club. So these gentlemen are a part of the seven-minute club. Let me get Mr. Andrew Anderson up front and just kind of line up over here for a second. Hold it right there. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, okay. Why don't you stay right there? Uh, Mr. Omar Abdullah, step down a little bit. Mr. Dustin Kukar. Mr. Noah Pauly. And Mr. William Newley. All of these gentlemen did this in a seven-minute time frame. Absolutely incredible. Now, there was one of these gentlemen who did it in six minutes and 45 seconds. Blazing. Fast. Strong. Right? That gentleman is Dustin Kukar. Come on, guys. We got something for you. Come on, gentlemen. Come down. Fine job. So um, there are a lot of things that make a fire department great, but I'm, let me tell you, I, I believe what makes the cab fire and rescue as great as it is, is the fine men and women who serve here day after day, who sacrifice day after day to be here and serve this county. So could we please, if we have any in the house, let's give it up for them. And as important as it is for us to have these fine men and women in all ranks, leadership is supremely important, y'all. Do y'all agree with that? Leadership is important. And, and, and I'm glad to say that we have one of the finest fire chiefs in the world, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Fulham. But I also had to have a team of peer leaders uh, when I was down at the fire, when they were at the fire academy with me. So we had 10 squads, and I had a squad leader for each squad. So I just want to recognize these uh, young men and women with a little token. So when I call your names, come on up. Just line up for a second. Let everybody clap for you. See how pretty you are. And then you can come over here and get one of these little tokens. Mr. Bryce Fennell. <laughs> Mr. Liam Folder. <laughs> your mama say, that's my baby. <laughs> Mr. Nathan Williams. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Shantiria Muir. Good job. Mr. Dustin Kukar. Mr. Dante Johnson. Mr. Noah Pauly. Mr. Nicholas Ramos. Miss Elaine Tompkins and Mr. John Wright. Give it up for the leadership, peer leadership team. Woo! Awesome job. Now, look, I told you guys when we first started, I said if this was going to be successful, it was going to be because of the hard work and the effort that you put in as peer leaders. Now, let me tell you how successful this was. It is very rare in a class that we lose less than about one out of every, if, if you have five, we'll probably lose one out of those five. They only lost two people their whole time. They only lost two. That's awesome. Good job. So y'all come on over, grab your little token. Come on, come on. Just keep going, keep going. Grab and go, grab and go, grab and go, grab and go. Grab and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right. Now, not only did I have squad leaders, I also had class leaders. Now, these gentlemen were in charge of the class. Now, okay, let me explain this because I didn't do that earlier. So because our class was so large, we had to split them in half. So we had a platoon A and a platoon B. So we had squad leaders for each platoon in A and squad leaders for, for, each, uh, for each squad in platoon B. And I had class leaders over those squad leaders. So these two gentlemen are Mr. Peter Bridges and Mr. Christopher Rodmanovich. Now let me tell you about these two guys just for a second. They were hopping, jumping, and running the whole time. Because every day, all day long, we were calling on them to get things done and to get people moving, and they did a fine job. Not to mention that Mr. Bridges also served as the class leader when he was in the EMS class. So give these guys a hand one more time, please. Come on, gentlemen. Good job. All right. Now, these are some extra special awards in my mind, right? This is kind of special recognition. So just for a minute, I want to I um, call up a couple of names. One is Mr. Troy Wright. Stand up for me, Mr. Troy Wright. And also uh, Mr. John Wright. Stand up for me. And also Mr. William Newley. Now, I'll say, I'll say this about John and Troy. They were in our Explore program when they were in middle school, was it, when you guys started with us? They have been a part of the Cap Fire and Rescue since they were in middle school. That's awesome, y'all. And uh, yeah, that is an awesome thing. And Mr. Newley came through our, our class one time, didn't quite make it, but guess what? He came back and did an awesome job this second time. I gotta give it up. Good job, sir. Have a seat. Now, I did have to uh, give some special recognition to one of my two explorers. Um, this particular gentleman has always, I mean, honestly, I feel like he's been here as long as I have. I know that's not true because he ain't as old as me, but it seems like he's been a part of this fire department as long as I have because I remember seeing his face uh, during the Explorer program during the summer times. And um, he's always been a very excited young man, uh, young man about fire service. <laughs> and I would oftentimes find these recruits out just training on their own. And he was always a part of this group. Now, also, he had some challenges, some physical challenges during his time, but he stuck with it and he stayed with it the whole time. So I have to recognize Mr. John Wright and give him what I would like to call the Commitment Award for being committed. For his, come on, sir. Yeah, that's your son. And I know his daddy because he be in my ear all the time. <laughs> all right. A couple of more. Um, well, three more. This particular award, I like to call the Attitude Award. All right, don't mess this up, y'all. Attitude is. Attitude is. What they just said was, I say, and I do this every time I come in the classroom, attitude is, and they say, the determining factor. Because anything you do in life, if you're going to be successful or, or if you're going to fail, your attitude is probably going to be the thing that determines that. So when I come in the classroom and I say attitude is, and they say, that means it's time to get focused. It's time to get ready. It's time to get our minds, put our heads in the game. Let's learn this information. But there was one particular individual whose attitude just was exemplary. I mean, there were several that were. And this was, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This was really hard to make this decision. But uh, we got together as a staff, and we decided that this award for exemplary attitude should go to Elaine Tompkins. Good stuff. Oh. 
All right. This next award is what we call the Most Improved Award. Now, uh, this recruit starting out, it was kind of bad. I'm just be honest. It was, it was bad. It was bad. Bad. Real bad. But um, myself and all of the instructors, we got together and we sat this young man down and we had a heart to heart. And um, I think he saw, I hope what he saw in that time was that, number one, we really care about what happened to these young men and women. We're not just training people just to put a body on a truck. We're training people to take care of, for instance, my mother lives in DeKalb County. My auntie lives in DeKalb County. My brother, my nieces, my nephews. So I'm not training you for the arbitrary stranger. I'm training you to take care of my mama. And if you're going to take care of my mama, you better be right. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but they also realize that we care a lot about what happens to them. And what I want to see for all of these young men and women is a nice long career and a big retirement party because <laughs> I'm coming, right? But this young man started out rough, but he improved so much it was amazing. So I want to give this most improved award to Mr. Marcus Relliford. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this last award is what we call our Lion Heart Award. Um, this usually goes to someone who has really had to overcome a lot to be a part of the Cap County Fire and Rescue. Um, and a lot of times, you just don't know what people are going through. You don't know what they sacrifice to be here. And um, I had the opportunity to, to talk to this young man. When I said, tell me a story. Why are you here? And he began to tell me a story. And as he told me a story, I stood there with my mouth hanging open like, what? You're doing all of that just so you can be a part of this fire department. And it really amazed me. And uh, after we had that conversation, I thought about several people in the class. And there were, trust me, there were several people in the class who could have gotten this award and they would have earned it. But this one particular gentleman stuck out in my heart, and that is Raul Calzada. Okay, so I'm done, but I always, I always like to give some, some last words before I let these recruits go. And it's, and it's funny because we start off and I don't like them, they don't like me. Um, all of us are screaming and yelling at them. <laughs> Front leaning rest, that's all they hear all day. And their muscles are sore. But by the time we get to the end of this, we really get to know these people. Maybe not everything, but we get to know a lot about them because we see them in some very difficult circumstances. And I'll say that every class has a particular theme that seems to be the undercurrent of how they operate. But 113, I, for me, I think the heart of 113 was this idea of generosity and this, this, this unified desire to answer the call. Um, I think they had this mindset that whatever we have that is needed, we're bringing it to the table, and we're going to make the situation better. And they did just that. Example. So we, uh, down at the tower, have been talking about having a gym so that when men and women are struggling with the PCT test that takes a lot of effort in certain areas, we wanted to have a gym so they could, you know, strengthen themselves in certain areas. And we've talked about this amongst ourselves for a long time, and all of a sudden, they say, hey, we want to make a presentation to you guys. And they present to us uh, 300 pounds of weights, uh, a rack, a bench, and all of these other workout, uh, um, excuse me, all of this other workout equipment that we didn't ask them to buy. They decided to do this on their own. They saw that we had a need, and they decided to fill that need. And I'll tell you what, y'all, that is what this job is about. It's not necessarily about waiting for someone 
to tell you you have uh, uh, the, the right to help is just helping when you see a need. And that's what y'all did. So um, um, for me, that's a huge thing, a big thing. And it means a lot to us at that fire academy because you guys have, you are leaving a legacy that is going to be a part of that fire academy probably from here on out. But the thing I want to leave with you is what I learned <laughs> from you. And it's this. We are common, everyday, ordinary miracles. Every last person in this room is a miracle. Now, usually I do this just to say something, say, hey, good job, congratulations, call me when you get your first fire. But what I'm about to say, I'm serious, y'all, and, and I might be going too deep here, but I really want this to revolutionize the way you, everybody in this room, looks at yourself. The next time you look in the mirror, I want you to see a miracle. And I want you to think about this. The probability that you, as an individual, you yourself, would be born was 10 to the 2,685th power. That's a 10 with 2,685,000 zeros behind it. You're not a mistake. You're a miracle. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember that, and I want you to go be somebody's miracle because somebody is going to need you. Thank you very much. Yes. Somebody is going to need you one day. And what do I always say? What do we want? What do we need? And somebody's going to need your best. You are somebody's miracle. And guess what? Because you work in DeKalb County, you're going to be somebody's miracle a lot. <laughs> they got a direct line to your house. And they will be calling frequently. But listen, I don't want you to be afraid to be the miracle that you were born. And listen, I'm talking to everybody in here, including myself. I wish I had a mirror. Because I'm talking to all of us. We have the capacity and the ability to be somebody's miracle. When the opportunity arises, I hope you have the wisdom to see it. And then I hope you have the courage to do it. Thank you very much. All right, next up, I'd like to introduce Peter Bridges. He's going to give the class remarks. Good evening. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Peter Bridges, and I've had the pleasure of being class leader to this awesome group of men and women for the past 40 weeks. First and foremost, I need to say thank you to the families. Thank you for the support and sacrifices you've made over the last 11 months. To all the wives, children, moms, dads, girlfriends, boyfriends, and any other family members of these 46 individuals sitting up here, we want to say thank you. I know this journey has been extremely difficult. Your recruit has come home physically and mentally exhausted, sore, bruised, sick, angry, sad, and yeah, occasionally happy. <laughs> and every day, they've been asked to put you aside and at 0700 be standing there in formation, at attention, ready to give 100% in everything that was planned for that day. Well, your support is a big part of what brings us here today. So again, thank you, recruit. <laughs> now everyone on this stage owes you, and we will start paying that debt back tomorrow. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge the esteemed dignitaries that are in attendance today our executive officers, and our academy instructors. 
We thank each and every one of them for this amazing opportunity. To my fellow classmates of 113, it doesn't end with the academy. We'll be asked to put aside our personal lives on a daily basis and serve the citizens of DeKalb County in their time of need. When they call 911, they don't care if your child is sick, if you just had a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend, your husband or your wife. They don't care if your truck's radiator is leaking all over the garage. All they want is for you to help solve their problem. And just like you've shown over the past 40 weeks, you will put aside all of your personal feelings and do your best to take care of them. There's been a lot of talk about family lately. And all you have been told, and we've all been told numerous times, that we're now a part of the DeKalb County Fire Rescue family. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Most families you're either born into or marry into. You can't do either one of those things at DeKalb County Fire Rescue. No, for this family, you must earn your way in. As we've seen firsthand, it doesn't matter who you know or are related to. You must prove yourself just like everyone else that has come before you. As instructor Lindsay always says, you had to earn your spot, so don't lose it. You had to pass the interviews, the physical, and the PAT under your own power. A lot of us started together in EMT school, which required hours of classroom time, studying, testing, and practicals, which brought us closer together as a unit. But not all who started with us made it to the academy. Once we reached the academy grounds, we were joined by another 18 individuals who were already EMT certified, and the process of becoming a cohesive unit started all over again. During the following 20 weeks at the academy, we sat through numerous classroom presentations, of which 36 of those had a written test. We received hands-on classes covering various firefighting skills on the drill grounds of which 23 required us to demonstrate proficiency in practical skills testing situations. We run up and down that tower untold times and pushed ourselves farther than we thought we could. We've overcome fears, injuries, illnesses, and now, just like every other uniformed member of this department, we've earned our spot in the DeKalb County Fire Rescue family. Now, we don't get to stop earning our spot in this family. I'm sure there have been a few individuals who forgot this and are no longer a part of this family. They forgot how hard they work to sit where we're sitting at right now. They forgot that everything we do on and off duty is a reflection of this family. They stopped earning their spot, and now they are no longer a part of this family. And as Instructor Heindel says, they had to pack their dab and go home. You see, your membership in this family is earned, not married into, not born into, but earned. DeKalb County, your friends and family, and all the training staff have invested a lot in us. So we must remember and continue to earn our spot here for the next 25 years. As instructor Leota would say, does that make sense? <laughs> now I would like to close with four statements you are, you are all probably sick of hearing, but they need to be said in this public forum. Now it would be public knowledge and you'll always be held accountable. Instructor Gray taught us, if you wanna be a beast, you gotta train like an animal. Instructor Trotty taught us, it'll be all right, just Bill's character. <laughs> and always remember Instructor Heindel's nugget of wisdom. Don't embarrass this county and don't embarrass this department. <laughs> to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. And to my fellow classmates, I'm extremely proud to be called your class leader. Thank you for your hard work. And congratulations to each and every one of you.
Great job, Recruit Bridges. Fantastic, fantastic speech. Now I'd like to introduce our fire chief, Darnell Fulham. <laughs> chief Fulham has over 33 years of experience in the fire service. Chief has a master's degree in management and a bachelor of science from Shorter University. Chief Fulham joined DeKalb Fire Rescue in 2014. Chief believes that a well-trained, community-based fire department will best serve the citizens of DeKalb. He also has a vision that our department will always follow, that we will remain in a constant state of improvement. That motto is obvious in every aspect of our fire department. Let's give a big welcome to our fire chief, Darnell Fulham. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, we're not going to slow it down yet. All right, and I'm going to keep it moving. Um, first of all, let me say something. As a leader, you get to make decisions. And one of the greatest decisions that I always make is that I come last in speaking. And here's the reason why. Because what they said, what both of these individuals, Instructor Gray and Recruit Bridges said, pretty much said everything that I was going to say. <laughs> so I get to shorten my, my speech down a little bit here. But first of all, I got to thank a few folks. And we talked about this early on, that we were going to be thanking a lot of people. Uh, I have to thank the CEO once again. Um, his leadership over this, these past four years um, has led to this, has led to the increase in, in our firefighters, our pay, this is the second year in a row, I believe, that the recruits have actually received a increase while they were still a recruit. What? Oh, I was going to say, did you hear me? Yeah, they actually received a 4% increase while they were still in recruit school. Haven't hit the street yet. Maybe they didn't tell you all that. I don't know. Maybe they, <laughs> I might be letting something out. But thank you to CEO Michael Thurman and the support that he has given to the fire department. I also have to thank our, our board of commissioners. Uh, as the CEO often mentions, nothing's done without four votes. There are seven of them, but we have to have at least four of them uh, in order for anything to be approved. But we have the full support of the board, so I thank them as well. Uh, also, we have a public safety director. He's not able to be here today. Um, he is actually out on a business trip in New York. Uh, I can tell you this, he loves this moment. Uh, we kid him a lot because he comes from the police side, but uh, he really enjoys being here and, um, and always hearing, he, he'll tell me all the time about the numbers that he hears, the accomplishments of the recruit class, but he's unable to be here today, and that's Director Lumpkin, but we do thank him for his support as well. Also, I do have to thank the, the firefighters. Uh, we have some of them here, and I can tell you, we usually have a larger group of firefighters, but with all the rain, I was talking to uh, Chief uh, Dobson, with all the rain and everything that's going on, they're running a lot of calls right now. So I can tell you, we don't have as many as we normally would, but I do see some of them on the wall. I just want to thank them. It, it is truly my honor every morning that I wake up. It is truly my honor and a pleasure uh, to serve as the fire chief here. I, I tell folks I don't have many bad days where I wake up, and there really hasn't been one where I've woken up and said I don't want to come to work. And that is because of the men and women who are here. So I thank them all for the work that they do each and every day and uh, just wish a special blessing because they are out there once again during this, this rain. So thank you. So, there's a saying, a truism, that you often hear about leaders, and I'm sure you all have heard this one before, but they say if a leader doesn't have followed a verse, he's just doing what? They've heard it before, just taking a walk, right? So you have to have followers. I don't like to call them followers because we really are a team. But those folks that were introduced, these folks on the front row, really all these folks in, in uh, these uniforms up here, 
uh, and some of them out there do an outstanding job. That's what has made this fire department a great department is the men and women who give each and every day all they have uh, to make it what it is. So thank you once again. I keep moving this mic over. Okay. And then, very specifically, I have to speak about the training staff. It was mentioned. Uh, they pour their hearts and their souls, and I think you heard it just from what uh, you heard from Instructor Gray, but they truly pour everything they have into these recruits. They really do. And let me tell you how much I know that they do that. Because there's 67 or so, there's two more classes that are right behind these two. So in other words, there's two more classes, and I, I got to help you understand this, that are actually in recruit school right now. One in the EMT portion and one at the tower. So it doesn't stop. So tomorrow morning when they wake up, I give them the night off. But when they wake up in the morning, they're going right back to work with the next group of recruits that hopefully will be in this position in a few months to walk across this stage. So once again, my hat's off to you, the great work that you do. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Now, last but not least, and you've heard it already, but I want to thank you as well to every person that's out here that had these folks back. I'll call them young folks. I can truly call them young folks. I know I'm older than every single one of them. But those folks out here, you, the family, the friends that had to sacrifice, had to commit, because I'm sure some of you were up helping them study. I hope you were preparing them. We thank you for first allowing them to serve because this is truly a service. So we thank you for allowing them to serve, but we thank you for the sacrifice that you made. So I'm going to ask them not only to give you a hand, but to stand up because you really need a standing ovation. So stand up. Thank you. So, as I mentioned, I'm not going to be here long because I know where you want to get to, and, th and there's an important part that follows right after I do, and that is giving of the helmets and pinning of the badges and giving the oath. So, but I do want to talk about a few things, and, and once again, a lot of it, and we didn't practice this, but a lot of things that I'm going to say, I believe in a way you've heard, or at least heard partially. Uh, to recruit Bridges, you did an outstanding job. You really did. That, that, I, I don't know that I've heard one better when it comes to the class president and what he said and the commitment uh, and the charge that he gave to his fellow recruits. So great job. Outstanding job. <laughs> now, I want you to think about something, too. You know, uh, once again... Uh, Instructor Gray talked about the uh, PCT, that they have to go through all of those different things and then how much time they have, 13 minutes, right? And you remember there was a seven-minute club. I, I really want to put that into perspective. I'd like for you to think back to this morning when you woke up and how long it took some of you to get out of bed. Anybody hit the snooze button? That snooze is, uh, young man, I, I hope you didn't do it, young man. You, you had to go to school. But that snooze button usually lasts what? Eight minutes. Somebody said eight minutes like he knows because he uses it every morning. But, so think about that. Seven-minute club. Let's say you jump right out of bed. How long does it take for you from the point you get out of bed, you put your feet on the floor, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, you do all those things? How long does it take before you're ready to leave the house? So it's just putting it in perspective. And it's putting it in perspective because of what they're getting ready to do when they go out to the stations. And the amount of time that they have from a point sometimes of a dead sleep 
to being on a fire scene and having to save somebody's life. So I want you to think about that. So I'm going to talk to the recruits a little bit, but I'm also speaking to you. We celebrated Martin Luther King's uh, birthday and holiday. And Martin Luther King, uh, during his last sermon that was given at Ebenezer Baptist Church, there was a call to service. And that call to service, and I'm going to read, and I'm not going to, obviously, I'm, not, I'm going to paraphrase this, but I'm going to point out some important parts of his sermon is related to what these men and women are charged to do. And it says, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love, and you can be a servant. So this is a choice. We talk about a calling, but I am a believer that even through that calling, it's renewed every day. And let me tell you how it's renewed. So in, in the sermon, he was talking obviously more holistically about serving and serving others. But the fire service, we have an opportunity. And that opportunity is that we can serve others each and every day in very small ways and very large ways. You heard it mentioned, I think it may have been uh, Recruit Bridges that talked about on duty and off duty. The fact of the matter is firefighters can't turn it off, can't pass a call, pass a, a wreck without making sure everybody's okay can't be in a, a restaurant where somebody may be coughing and not look back to see that they're okay. It can't be turned off because it truly is a calling. And that calling is refreshed every day in very small ways by showing up for work. Yes, we do have to be on time. It's by asking what can you do. It's by being prepared for work each and every day. And it's being a student of this profession. So, what all this training that was talked about, once again, by instructor and, and by Recruit Bridges, what has been created is really just a foundation. And that foundation is so that, ultimately, your family members will be safe when they're out there doing their job. But it's going to require, it's going to require you to continue to learn. It doesn't stop today. It doesn't stop today. Whether you're here for five years, 10, or even 30, every day has to be a learning experience. So now, I will have a pleasure, I'll have the pleasure of coming back up and, and uh, giving the oath. But I wanna say this to you. Congratulations once again. I get to call you recruits one more time I'm going to call you recruits one more time, but congratulations. Outstanding job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief Fulham. All right, everybody. This is what we've been waiting for, right? Okay, we can go ahead, but we got some, uh, we got some rules here. They're not real strict rules. We're just going to try to help it so this whole process goes a little quicker. Um, as I stated earlier, family members are welcome to come up to the stage, pin their loved one, have another family member or somebody take a picture of them, okay? Um, but the way that's going to work is that we all kind of have to do what we call in the fire services, we got a stage. So you got to start staging over there. So you kind of look at the program, know when your family member is going to be coming up next, so we don't have to, when we call them, you know, you're saying take a big, long time to get up here, already be up there ready to go. So that's how we're going to try to speed this process up, this process up as quick as possible. Remember, we got 46 recruits, so if we do it in a minute apiece, it's still 46 minutes. 
And so that we want to do that or better, right? But we want to enjoy. We don't want to feel rushed. But again, I'm just trying to give you a little heads up. So um, before we get started, we're going to have our administrative staff that's going to come up and our, our executive staff and come up and uh, get ready to meet with the recruits and give them their badges and helmets. First to come on up, Omar Abdullah. You guys can come up on stage. I saw saying it was, yeah, come on. If you need to come on up, that's what I'm talking about. This is, we want good pictures. We don't want those bad ones. Get close. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Come on up. All right. And once you get your pictures, head out that way. All right, here we go. We're going to be we're going to be real efficient on the next ones, right? <laughs> we're going to have this down. All right. Congratulations. Andrew Anderson. Come on through. Congratulations. Darian Brewster. Peter Bridges. Okay. Families, can you please walk off to the left whenever we get the pictures? Thank you very much. We're getting a log jam over here. John Bryant. I'm doing all righty. Raul Casada. Families to the left. Families to the left. Jordan Case. Kevin Duffy. All right. Bryce Fennell.
Liam Fodor. Isaiah Hale. Justin Harkle Road. Joshua Hester. Just drop it right in that top one. Here we go. <laughs> Perfect. He got the easy shirt. Michael Howard. <laughs> St little stage fright. Let's give him a little, a little round. Of, let's give him a little round. He could do it. Come on, big guy. Joshua Hutto. Dane Johnson. Let it out. It's all good. Let it out. That was the good way. <laughs> they came here for you, man. You can't be out of the picture. <laughs> Dante Johnson. Straighten it up a little bit just for the pictures. There we go. There's some other shirts are easier, but that one's a tough one. <laughs> I 
All right. Demetric Johnson. <laughs> Renzel Johnson. Dustin Kirkar. <laughs> she said blazing fast. <laughs> Get to shake them hands. <laughs> Charles McCray. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to get a mic up. We got iPads, iPhones, <laughs> Samsung. Man. Oh, okay. FaceTiming. That's next level. Hey, and they live. Oh, man. How y'all doing out there in D.C.? Miles Miller. Taking a picture. Nicholas Morfa. Congratulations. Brent Maureen.
Centuria Muir. Frank Endenema. Peter Wynn. William Newley. <laughs> Passing it on down. Keeping it in the family. Noah Pauly. Got some more keeping it in the family. It's a business. James Polite. All righty. We got Atlanta PD and City of New York Fire Department represented on this one. It's definitely a family affair here. Sam, you will Purdue. <laughs> Darius Purnell <laughs> Big brother in the house <laughs>
Christopher Radmanovich. <laughs> Nicholas Ramos. All right, all right. New York in the house. Okay. Marcus Relaford. Were you backing up? All right. <laughs> Matthew Rubenstein. Chase Shaw. David Stinnett. All right, Sandy Springs represented up in here. Marquavius Taylor.
Elaine Tompkins. Troy White. Congratulations. Asher Williams. <laughs> Keeping it in the family. Decap. Nathan Williams. <laughs> oh, that's who he belonged to with all the shirts. All the shorts. Robert Williams. Jennifer Wise. John Wright. Last but not least.
He used to ride on the fire truck with me when he was like 15. He used to come to Station 2 all the time. I had to act like I didn't know him for the past month, year. I'd like to ask Fire Chief Darnell Fulham to come to the stage and give the firefighter oath. All right, recruits, on your feet. As I mentioned before, this will be the last time that they will be called recruits. Now they'll be called probies. <laughs> Those orange shields they have signify that they are probationary firefighters. So, raise your right hand. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will perform the duties as a firefighter of the DeKalb County Fire Rescue Department to the best of my skill and ability and that I will not let personal or political influence or prejudice, alter my official conduct to the slightest degree. I will always remember that I am a public servant. I will perform my duties to the best of my ability in any capacity or section which will serve the best interests of the Cab County Fire Rescue and the citizens of the Cab County. I further promise and swear I will uphold the Constitution of the State of Georgia and of the United States of America to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Can I have Captain Frederick Poole to come up and give the final dismissal? Um, firefighters, before you dismiss off the stage, we're going to move those tables out of the way so we can try our best to get a really group shot, good group shot. I know you're going to be stiff and sore and everything because y'all going to be standing there for a little bit trying to everybody get a little something. But um, we'll try to do the best we can. But after you're dismissed, um, stay right here so we can get a picture of you. And uh, also, someone left a cell phone in the bathroom. All right, I got you. Well, you're covered. Okay, all righty. Firefighters, on your feet. Class 113, dismissed.